Hi, this is Karen with the Kind Card and Stuff. Um, back in October of 2022, I, well, actually, October, yeah, October 2022, I had sent in my uh, com composting worms to be identified. Now, why did I do that? Because I want, I had five of them that I wanted identified to make sure that they are what they were because they tended to look different and be different from what I'm used to. So anyway, I was curious. And um, so I sent them to this place right here, Oligoketology Laboratory, um, <clears throat> specifically to Dr. John W. Reynolds, who's a director. Anyway, and just who is he and how did I find him? Well, it, it was a long search, um, contacting people if they did it or, you know, identified worms or if they knew anybody. And uh, Dr. Reynolds' name kept coming up, so I contacted him. And let me see his bio here. <clears throat> By the way, I got his book. Well, let me go back. Um well, one of the things he did, let me go back here before we, going, before we go on to him. He sent me, one of the things he sent me was um, his latest book. This was after I received the results of the worms. And uh, this is his book, The Earthworms in Canada. A picture of the Isenia fetida. And it's very long book like 186 pages <clears throat> numbered i think there's 172 but there's uh you know a preface and then the all the rest of the pages and um you can see it's very recent 2022 and let's see very extensive very technical so if you like technical, if you love, you know, all the intricacies, all the um, background, um, it's not a quick read, then th you would love this book. I, I love this book. It, it's just a treasure. Anyway, so, uh, so this is what's in this book. <clears throat> And he uses the these two basically to um, identify the worms. It's very technical. Maybe I'll go through it. But anyway, who just who is um, just who is Doctor Reynolds, and why should I listen to him? <laughs> Let me get back to his biography here. Okay, Dr. John Warren Reynolds, he was born in Montreal, Quebec, and now resides in Kitchener, Ontario, which is also in Canada. He received his biological training in Ontario Ag Agricultural College, Wilmington College in Ohio, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana, University of Tennessee, Knoxville and earned other professional degrees. Um, you can read this. Gosh, it's just expensive. This guy's a, a scholar um, extraordinaire. Uh, so he went to all these universities. <clears throat> he also received grants and research support from the United States Department of Agriculture, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the United States Atomic Energy Commission, the National Institutes of Health and the National Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada to support his research activities. <clears throat> his study of earth earthworms was under the mentorship of the late Dr. Gordon E. Gates, the Dean of American Oligoketology. Dr. Reynolds is the author of more than 500 publications in 12 disciplines the more, majority of which are in the field of 
oligoketology, which is the study of earthworms, basically. I mean, it has a whole <laughs> specific description just to itself, but as far as my level, it's earthworms. Study of earthworms. He's been the editor-in-chief. Da, da, da. He's got all these things that he's been chairman of, professor and faculty, served as members, and is a member. Let's see. Anyway, so you, you can read this. Just do a screenshot or pause your um, video and go ahead and read this. Let's see, at the end here, over the years, he has developed programs to excite students and members of the general community about the role of earthworms in the environment, primarily through many lectures and 18 great global earthworm races in Canada, Mexico, Japan, Dubai, and India. He's a member of the Genome Project Canada. And John is the director of the Oligoketology Laboratory in Kitchener, Ontario, and a research associate at the New Brunswick Museum, St. John, Canada, since 2007. So let's just say he's a very learned person and he knows what he's doing. Okay, I'll just go through basically the results. If you think you want to know what it takes to identify worms, well, let me just go back there really quick. And I won't spend a lot of time on it because it is very intricate. As you can see on here, you know, this, this book of his is really great. It's filled with photographs and um, pictures. Um, let me see if I can find out where exactly. Oh no, these are the separate. Yeah, the, this book of his goes into 33 different types of species that have been identified um, in Canada. There have been more since he even published the book last year. I believe it's 35 now. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, 25. I think it's page 31. Let's see. Identifications of the earthworm. Yeah. Something is kind of, maybe I didn't read this right. He says, <clears throat> They can, for the following, they can be done without the necessity of dissecting the specimens. But then, um, I guess there are some that are more intricate as far as being able to identify them. And um, occasionally, right down here, paragraph here, there may be a need for earthworm identification without time for dissection so anyway uh let's see let's see the study of the characters used in the key and i'll go over the key requires no more than a good hand lens or a low power binocular microscope the key itself is strictly dichotomous the numbers in parentheses after the main couplet numbers indicate the couplet from which that particular point in the key was reached they are inserted to make it easier to trace one steps through the key in the event then an obviously incorrect alternative has been reached. Okay. So these are keys. I'm sure they're basic keys. So how these this key works is, um, so for the first thing you look at, at the, the worm is the clitellum. Is it annular or saddle? And depending on what type of clitellum it is, you go to the next number that's listed here on the right. So if it's annular, then you go to number two. So number two says is a sete um, arrangement. I'm not, 
I'm not sure how to say these words, paracatine or lumbr lumbricine arrangements. Then you go on to the next number, number three or number four. So keeping, um, it go, keep going to the, down the key. Then you look at the sexthetic, sexthecal, thecal pores, quadrathecal pores. Um, and this one here, well, if it's, if it fits this description, then this is what it is. If it fits this description, the quadrathetical pores, quadrathecal pores, then it's um, Hilgendorfi. So anyway, so you go on and on. Looking at the prostomial, and what what numbers are these are these things at? Anyway, so it keeps going on and on. Color red or purple, not red or purple. The sete closely paired, not paired. Prostomium clitellum begins on or after, before segment twenty four, after segment twenty four, and it keeps going on and on and on. So this is the length of the key which is in his book of course i don't see anything here that would go under um i well i see your hortensis here but i don't see isenia Oh, here it is, Isenia Fetida. Okay, what's not listed under here is Isenia Andre, so it's not a, a complete thing. It's a uh, in progress book. But anyway, <sighs> so his his book is very detailed, and it it gives you photos and um drawings of worms, earthworms. Anyway, well, let's get on to the reveal. Okay, I had sent to him three of each of my five different types of worms that I wanted identified. Um, this A, what I did was I separated them, uh, you know, three in each and put it in a little, um, each in their own little bag. So they were all separated, A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, one with a jumbo, jumbo European nightcrawler. Uh, the other was red worms. This one is another red worm. Red Wiggler, Red Wiggler, but it was from a different uh, source. And this one, um, they told me, was a Euro Nightcrawler, which is what they had, were told that it was, was what it was. But to me, it, it was more like, and their size and the way they, uh, their characteristics was more like a Red Wiggler. And then the last one was a European Nightcrawler that I was given, most of these I was given. There's a couple of these that I purchased. Uh, but anyway, uh, and the numbers here in the center, um, here's the key to it, juveniles. The first number here, the amount that were juveniles. So you can see that I had sh sent him one juvenile. I hope they didn't get mixed up. I don't know if these got mixed up, but anyway. Um, and the second column here is a clitellate adults, which means a means without. So without a clitellum, clitella, clitella, <laughs> without a clitella. So over here, I had sent him two of them that were adults but didn't have clitellum or a clitella. <laughs> and on the third column are clitellate adults, meaning they do have the clitella. They were adults and had clit clearly had clitella. 
So you can see the numbers on here. Okay, so let's do the reveal. Jumbo European Nightcrawler. What was it identified as? Isenia Andre and Isenia Fatida. Why they were Jumbo? I'm not quite sure. I think he says, uh, I, I did ask Dr. Reynolds about that. And he said that they were most likely bred like that. Bred, you know, like how you can breed animals. Well, to be, a, you know, a certain size or miniature or whatever. These were bred to be huge. Okay, the second one. Number uh, number B, Isenia Andre. I don't know why there was only two in here. Maybe one escaped because it looked like there's four here. Um, Isenia Andre. Hmm. C, which is supposed to be Red Wigglers. Isenia Andre. All three of them were Isenia Andre. The, this is D. It's supposed to be European Nightcrawler. Isenia Andre. And E. It's supposed to be European Nightcrawler. Isenia Andre and Isenia Fetida. Interesting. None of them were European Nightcrawlers. I wish I would have sent them my uh, African Nightcrawler, but that's here nor there. <sighs> so what do I think about this? Well, those species that I was given and sold and told that they were these specific European Nightcrawlers, in all good faith, I cannot sell them as European Nightcrawlers anymore or give them away or tell them that they are European night crawlers, all I can say is I had these identified and they are red wigglers. They are all red wigglers, all different sizes. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Do I think Dr. Reynolds is incorrect? No, I don't believe he is incorrect at all. He has been called in court as an expert witness because there, because of this misleading, you know, marketing ploys that goes on when, you know, when people are sold worms. Oh, you said it was da da da. I bought European night crawlers, and it said on the shipping, on the container, on the in your on your website, on your. Um, at Walmart on the containers. Oh, this is a European night crawler when it wasn't indeed. <laughs> so you have to be really careful, especially those of us that are, are selling worms, whether it's in, in person or online or anything, you, you know, you, you just have to be careful. Now, do I feel that I need to go after these people that sold me these other worms? No. For me, I can no longer sell them as European night crawlers. Uh, what I have are all red wigglers, either Isenia Andre or Isenia Fetida. Basically, they look the same, except one is striped and one is not striped but they are two different species. If they do get locked up, you know, uh, what do I want to say? <laughs> do try to reproduce, they will get locked up, but they will not produce viable offspring. They will produce what is called dummy cocoons, which basically there's nothing in there. They're dummy, dummy cocoons, zero, zero, zilch, nada. So that, that would also be a sign if someone is selling cocoons. Are, is what you have mixed breeds? Isenia Andre, Isenia Fetida? Or are they pure? 
you know, according to Dr. Reynolds, most worm farmers have at least two different species. I mean, he says it's not uncommon to have at least two different species of worms in your worm herd. If you are selling cocoons, just be, uh, you know, just, just be wary of that. Or if you're buying cocoons, just be wary of that. So if you buy 500 cocoons, you may not receive 500 plus um, little hatchlings. You may receive less than that. So that's it. I, If you think you would like to uh, get your, your worms identified, I'm going to put Dr. Reynolds' email address uh, across the screen here and then also in the description below he gave my gave me permission to give his email address out so you may contact him and he can tell you you know what to do but you he'll, he'll need at least two to three specimens to be able to identify so what do you think about this does it make you want to wonder what do you have in your worm bins Maybe you don't care. Maybe you just want to be able to just process your, your food waste and that's it. But it'd be curious. Anyway, it, it doesn't cost that much. <laughs> I'm not going to say how much it costs me. If this video is to remain on YouTube, then, you know, I don't want prices going out there, which may be incorrect. But as, as of this date, Dr. Reynolds' email address is correct so you can contact him you can also contact him if you want to get his book which is very extensive like i said let me just show you what he's he's got it written down for each gosh it's so extensive let me find it find the one for isania fatida all right here is the beginning of that little section right before Isenia, well, this is the Isenia, the gen genus of Isenia, when it was discovered and by who, the years 1877, 1900, 1969, um, type of species, diagnosis, and just a basic description. Um, Okay, here is Isenia fatida, which has a name of manure worm, the na nature name, the general name. Okay, oh, here, diagnosis. Diagnosis is a description. Small to medium-sized earthworm length. 35 to 130 millimeters, which is 1.377 to 5.11 inches, uh, generally less than 70 millimeters or less than 2.8 inches, diameter 3 to 5 millimeters or 0.12 to 0.20 inches. Anyway, so not it could be big you know it could be a large worm small to medium sized earthworm small to 1.3 to 5.11 inches where it was found in where it is found in now <clears throat> this species only isenia fetida is a species only found in temperate and boreal boreal countries in nature, this epigeic species lives near the soil surface within the deco decomposing organic matter or in dead woods. Due to its high affinity with composting material, it has become the main species used in vermiculture. It is also a central species as model in toxicological studies and scientific research on earthworm molecular biology. It goes into the rep reproduction of it. Oh. Isenia fatida has a maximum life expectancy of four to five years, 
although between one to two years is more usual. This is interesting, the ecological type. Isenia fetida is an epigeic, epiendogeic or cortical species depending on the habitat. And the climates it can live in is boreal, temperate, Mediterranean, subtropical. And where where it's found, Canada and United States. In Canada, all provinces and ter territories due to vermicomposting. United States, all states due to vermicomposting. In Mexico, and in all of those um, countries or states in Mexico. And I'm sure it's growing. Anyway, so that's the type of descriptions and here's also a photo or a drawing of Isenia fetida Isenia hortensis I also would you know, since I don't have European night crawlers, um, be interested to see what a real European night crawler looks like. Let me see origin, range, reproduction, biology. Aha, it says a European nightcrawler, you know, that's a natural name, Isenia hortensis, is small. It's a small earthworm, smaller than Isenia fetida. So what we've been thinking and uh, on, on the web and on YouTube has been incorrect according to the scientists. Okay. <laughs> uh, and guess what? Right here, they, well, they've, the science has been giving them different names throughout the years. But guess what? In 2019, I had sent in my Louisiana swamp worms to Dr. Reynolds and they came back as dendrob, I don't even know how to say that, dendrobiana, dendro, I'll say it's Spanish like dendrobiana veneta, which guess what? It's a European night crawler. That's what it is. According to the scientists, small earthworm, Small, length, 1742. I don't know what that is in inches, but it's smaller than the Isenia fetida. So that's another one. You know, what is, what's in a name? What's in a name for the worms? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. Very interesting, right? Very interesting. There. I'll let you read that. Get his book, get your worms typed, get you, get it identified. Be at ease with what you're, you know, learn about your worms. If you're like me, you wanna kind of learn everything without having to go to school for it, but our own school of learning, our personal knowledge, that's what we're here for. But if you're just raising worms just to get rid of your food scraps, that's fine. That's wonderful. Um, we all started out like that. And we all still continue to do that because for whatever reason, we have this drive. <laughs> we have this drive of, you know, doing good for this earth. And part of that is 
our own personal knowledge. So with that, that's all I've got for you today. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave your comments below. And I thank you for coming on this journey with me. And I'll see you in the next video.